paperwork. There is always paperwork. And as we told you in Volume 1, before flying, you must make certain there is an airworthiness certificate, a registration certificate, weight and balance data, equipment list, and operating limitations in the aircraft. The operating limitations may be found in the airplane flight manual, approved manual material, markings, and placards, or any combination thereof. Maintenance of an airplane is the operator's responsibility and the mechanic's job, but it is also the pilot in command's responsibility to determine that an aircraft is in condition for safe flight. The airworthiness certificate itself is valid as long as the airplane is maintained in accordance with regulations. If an aircraft is used to carry passengers for hire or flight instruction for hire, it must have both annual and 100-hour inspections. If not used for hire, an airplane must have only an annual inspection. Annuals are good for 12 calendar months. If done on July 12th this year, it is good until the end of July next year. An extra 10 hours over the 100 is permitted on four higher airplanes if necessary to take the airplane somewhere for work. But an overage must be subtracted from the next 100. If one is due at 3,300 two and a half hours and it is done at 3,300 nine and a half, then the next one is due at 3,400 two and a half. An owner or operator of an airplane may also set up, with the FAA Flight Standards Office, a progressive inspection program. This program, when approved, replaces the annual and 100-hour inspections. Annuals, airworthiness directive compliance, and other maintenance must be recorded in the aircraft's maintenance records. Pilots can perform such minor maintenance as servicing the landing gear wheel bearings, but the nature of the work and the name, certificate number, and type of certificate of the person performing the work must be entered in the maintenance records. If work is done that substantially affects an airplane's operation in flight, or if it has been altered in a manner that may have appreciably changed its flight characteristics, the airplane must be flight tested by a pilot with at least a private pilot certificate and approved for return to service prior to being operated with passengers on board. Before being used, a transponder must have been tested and inspected within the preceding 24 calendar months. Emergency locator transmitters, or ELTs, are installed in most aircraft in the United States. They can be activated manually or automatically activated by a strong impact. Used to locate downed aircraft, analog ELTs transmit on the emergency frequencies of 121.5 and 243.0 MHz while digital ELTs transmit on 406 MHz. Non-rechargeable ELT batteries must be replaced when 50% of their usable life expires or when the emergency locator transmitter has been activated for more than one cumulative hour. Analog ELTs may be tested during the first five minutes after any hour. Digital ELTs must be tested per manufacturer guidelines. Information on ELT battery expiration will be found in the aircraft maintenance records. The digital 406 ELTs with GPS will locate the beacon anywhere in the world with a precision of 100 meters. They send out a serial number so the government authority can look up phone numbers to notify owner-designated individuals in four minutes, with rescue commencing shortly afterward. Pilots and ground stations are encouraged to continue to monitor for transmissions on the emergency frequencies of 121.5 and 243.0. Many 406 beacons are also equipped with 121.5 transmit capability.